Hello, everyone. So we are back again. And the next session, we have Brian Wang, head of engineering APAC at Stripe. And he will be sharing a very interesting session on the topic how Stripe builds APIs and teams. So Brian, a warm welcome to you. And over to you. Please take it away. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hey, um, can you hear me well, by the way? Yes or not? Yes, I guess. Yes, we can see you and we can hear you all fine. OK, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so let me share my screen. Uh, I'm curious about what you guys see. Are you able to see the screen well? Yes, we can. Yeah, OK. Uh, so it's the full screen, right? Is it right? Because I, I cannot really see my laptop for some reason. But are you able to see the slides well? Yes, I guess. All right, OK. Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian. So I'm currently leading the APAC uh, engineering teams at Stripe. Um, so uh, it was very nice of the previous presenter, Quad AI, that used Stripe as a positive example in uh, the API design and documentation. So, um, so today, I think I'm uh, you know, very humble to want to shed some light on how we build these, how we how we achieve these. Um, you know, come in the industry, many people refer Stripe as one of the best or easy to use APIs. And then we actually spend a lot of time and effort and uh, thinking about how to make it good. So we don't have that fancy AI uh, thing on the background, but we actually have put a lot of effort and thought into this. So let me um, today use this chance to share a little bit about that. So you start from some, um, uh, story. So, you know, this year, it, it marks the 50 years of Apollo moon landing. So when NASA wrote the original engineering requirements for the Apollo mission, it didn't even mention the word software. In his book, Digital Apollo, MIT professor David Mandel wrote, software was not included in the schedule, and it was not even included in the budget. But as you may know, software actually uh, is a, being a critical part of Apollo mission. So by 1968, over 400 people were writing software for the P Apollo program. Software was going to help the US get to the moon. And there is no e existing framework of software development philosophy to rely on. This was the first real software engineering team coupled together from a group of MIT scientists, NASA engineers, and uh, private contractors. And with so many engineers, uh, NASA and MIT quickly found that their biggest challenges were actually organizational. They had to manage communication problems, train new hires, perform union and integration tests. Ultimately, they designed their code base as a series of independent modules so work could proceed in parallel. Each module was verified independently before launch. So the Apollo mission is an incredible snapshot of how hard it is to build software. They had to start quite literally from the ground up and learn all the hard lessons of building infrastructure software with a lofty goal and an extremely compressed timeline. So in the decades since, the exponential rise in hardware computing power significantly, uh, sorry, significantly uh, made raise the stakes. Software could suddenly solve an incredible complex problem, but the same question that Apollo team needs to answer suddenly magnified. Sorry, I have some uh, technical difficulty here. OK, all right. So this brings us to how we deal with the challenge at Stripe. You know, we build economic infrastructures for millions of business around the world and expose it via an API platform, right? And when you're in a company like this, when you operate infrastructure, the decisions you make about how to build software impact everyone who relies on your service. So today we process more than 250 million API requests per day, and we deploy more than 4,000 year. We maintain more than 500 distinct API endpoints. And we do this with a team of more than 800 engineers based all around the world. 
from Dublin to San Francisco to Singapore. So, uh, you know, I'm in the Singapore, or we call it APEC, APEC hubs, engineering hubs. So we have offices in Bangalore, Tokyo, and also uh, Melbourne. So if you are interested in what we're doing in APAC, I'm happy to chat more about it after the talk. So our API constitutes of building blocks, common languages, and infrastructures that many businesses uh, right now rely on. The API we produce need to be simple and approachable for a global audience. They all need to feel powerful and flexible for developers and be collectively composable so business can design and evolve their operating model through code. We're, th we're thoughtful about our team structure and design practice to enable us to operate in a distributed autom autonomous fashion while preserving a consistent API. Because you, as you can see, we're a global distributed organization. So why is it important to get this right? And you know, the software is eating the world. Then I would say APIs are eating the software. Today at API days, you probably already heard um, how APIs are used in other applications like open banking, payment processing, and many other things. So for this talk, I want to focus on a few key principles that we learned from the experience at Stripe and hopefully will inspire you as you are building and publishing your APIs. So let's dive in. So the most important principle is user first. And this lesson is well learned by the best product and engineering organizations across our industry. Always start with your users. So, you know, we in inside of Stripe, we use something uh, like this. Amazon outlined their approach to designing for users in a process called working backwards for their AWS um, departments, where they created four documents, the press release, FAQs, outline of the customer experience, and the user manual building before building any code. As the name suggests, you may sound backward to start with the user manual and then press release. So with those resources, Amazon's team reliably communicate about new projects and quickly establish a shared region across the teams. One of the reasons AWS focused here is because when you build for builders, it's even more important to get all these details right. A similar um, intense focus on users is also a core part of Stripes. User first is actually our company operating principle. So as you can see, this is a, uh, our internal company internal confluence page and listed out all the operating principles and user first is our first one. It's, it is also a critical part of our history. Back when Stripe was a startup in the Palo Alto office, building out the very first version of the Stripe API, the team sat with prospective users and carefully interviewed them on the API design. It took three major redesigns before it shipped. For an early stage company, that is like an eternity. But with Stripe focus on developers, we realized that it was critical to both get the right semantics and build something that felt really good to use. And today, we still maintain the same IRC channel inhabited by some of our earliest users who provide us with the key feedback on our API. But Today, we need to support a highly diverse global user base in over 45 countries. So we have to scale our approach to engaging with more users. So writing a press release before starting on the implementation is, st is still a common practice for product briefs at Stripe. So here is one example where uh, describing our billing product, which is a subscription kind of payment processing product. It helped us align on what we were really trying to achieve with this product. And then we gather feedback directly from our API documentation and developer view in the dashboard with a CSAT metric and comments. These are reviewed by our developer experience team and funneled directly to product development teams. And in fact, some of our best products 
emerge from this ongoing conversation with our users. For example, after seeing so many users follow an extract transform load pattern with Stripe data to produce custom reporting, we created a tool called Stripe Sigma to allow users to rapidly query their Stripe data set using the common SQL interface. And we have multiple teams across the company continuously talking to and learning from users, including US research teams, product managers, deployment teams, support engineers, and developer experience teams. And in fact, we encourage everyone within Stripe to talk to our users in whatever capacity they operate. So as an infrastructure company, the foundation of our roadmap is often built from seeing the patterns of need across those conversations with users. And the next principle is that you just have to spend time to make it good. So what I mean by this is, you know, externally, Stripe API is often perceived as being uh, deeply consistent and polished, just similar to what the previous presenter was citing. And people often ask us, what's the secret behind the approach? And I think uh, the simple truth is that there's really no secret. We spent a lot of time and effort to making it delightful. So, and also it is very important to infuse a culture of great API design at multiple levels of product and engineering organization. Over time, we settled on a few key properties that capture our approach to our API designs. As you can see, simple, uh, composable, predictable, and backward compatible. So let's go over them one by one. First of all, simplicity. Um, very top level API resources should be easy to understand and map to real life concepts in a way that feel intuitive, right? So as you can see, many such examples are actually, uh, you can see the representation of those in our API documentation. Second is that API should be composable. They should be additive, right? So building blocks should fit together. Our goal is that any component of the platform would work pre predictably with every other components. So actually this chart is very important chart. So I'm gonna spend a little bit, bit more time talking about this. This is like relates to the Stripe's vision. So Stripe is building a thing called global payment and treasury network. The idea is that we can accept pay in, so money can flow into this uh, network by many different payment methods around the globe. Say if you're in Singapore, then uh, you know uh, people use GrabPay, for example, right? Um, so those like payment methods, some, some of them are local, some of them are global. People are able to use those to pay in into Stripe's network. And then we integrate with bank rails around the globe as well. So money can flow out to uh, our customers through banking rails. And then Stripe in between manages the money movements and also money storage by pro uh, providing programmatic APIs for users. And that is what we call the global payment and treasury network. And then on top of that, we can build applications by utilizing this money movements network. So as you use more and more Stripe's API, you get a cumulative advantage for example, we find that the users starting with the uh, our very basic global payment and treasury network APIs, and then use our Connect API, and then steadily add billing, which is uh, you know a su subscription model or, or um, repeated charges API, and then terminal if they want to accept the offline uh, pay payments. Sigma when they want to query data, I mentioned a little bit earlier about this tooling. So as their business evolves, they seek to unlock more and more new functionalities. The next principle is predictable. So APIs are infrastructure. So when you perform an operation multiple times, sometimes you wish to expect the same outcome. So we provide an potent operations so that user can safely rerun transactions without worrying about accidentally duplicating charges. Finally, API should be backward compatible. You can continue transacting on Stripe using your existing technical integration, even though uh, 
we add new features and evolve our design. You can then choose when to upgrade your infrastructure when you are ready. So those are the principles. And we have a, a very rigorous API design process allows any team to follow them while independently designing new products and API interfaces. Here's a process we follow when we're building new APIs. So we start with a design document that proposes a new API spec. It details any new endpoints, API resources, events, or changes to response parameters or webhook behaviors. Then we have a cross-functional review team with expertise in our platform operations, developer experience, front-end tooling, and security practices, and other areas across the Stripe. Then we conduct user testing to learn about how real users might adopt the new features and what tensions might come up. We then produce an early version and use the infrastructure in our system to get in specific users to provide as much early feedback as possible on a real working API that we haven't yet shipped to the world. And then finally, we have um, team members iron out any box documentation uh, and then issues a new API version. When we are ready to go live, we incrementally roll out the features uh, users across the platform and keep a close eye for issues that might come up. One thing to note here is that um, it is very important to actively clean, clean up those gates because you don't want to maintain multiple different gates in your code base. That will create a lot of like uh, uh, confusions for, for users. And one of the most important opportunities for expert feedback in that flow is our Stripe API review. This team of engineers encourage a culture of great API design. And over the years, they arrive at a set of encouraged design patterns. So I'm, I'm just going to share a little bit of um, those design patterns we arrived in and guidelines we use internally. So for example, we use nested structure to group related concepts rather than flattening out everything. This improves understanding and enable future extensibility. And properties in the API are preferred as enums rather than booleans because we cannot predict all the possible future states of the property. But here is one issuing example where uh, you know, initially you just want to have a true or false, but actually later you found out there are actually some more new states that you want to incorporate into uh, the, these particular attributes. And if an API request affects the object's state, it should be reflected in the response. Like for example, this one, you can see that the request here is modifying this customer's description to something different, like hello. It is important that these tags, hello, is reflected in the response. So you know your API request was successful. And we also have consistent pattern for polymorphic APIs. Sometimes API can return multiple types of object, but we still want to provide one generalized API. So we include a polymorphic response for each type. And uh, you know, po polymorphism in API design is notoriously difficult to get right. And the best pattern we arrive at is to rely on a type field to easily disambiguate what object you are receiving. Like for example, as you can see in this example, it's type equal to setup debits. So what all of these like seem really small, but in aggregate, these are really highly impactful. So of course, uh, one of those, none of those are hard and you know set in stone rules. They can often be good reasons to make an exception. And when we are in doubt, we use the principle of what's the best developer experience drive us, not how easy it is to implement for Stripe. And we regularly dog fooding our APIs and developer tools. For example, we organize internal hackathon to encourage open testing of the new APIs we ship. And many stripes, many people internally also run a side project or family business on our platform. 
So we encourage this because it provides us with an even more first-hand experience using our tools and platforms. And all of these like bring us to the final principle, which is design your organization. Um, you know, as what's also suggested in the uh, NASA example that I gave earlier. So in 1967, computer scientist Mel Conway authored what has become known as a Conway's law, stating that any organization that designs a system will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. So, you know, this especially hold true for software. As we replace our physical world with software systems, we can learn a lot about why software works in a certain way uh, by examining their organization that created. You know, there's a famous, this fan company org chart. And as you can see, like it's kind of reflected their um, uh, the product they're building. And Conway's law actually has a very interesting inverse corollary. You can be intentional about how you build a software engineering organization, knowing that you will be reflected in the work you produce. So coming back to this this chart, you know we have this GPTN layer. So we actually have a big team working on this global payment treasury network related work items. But then on top of those, those applications, they're actually um, our um, organizations behind it. So a spoiler alert is that this is actually our OHR as well. All right, to summarize, so these are the takeaways. First of all, you build for your users today, but consider your platform for tomorrow. And interview users carefully, consider patterns of feedback as your North Star. And remember every feature you add, you'll need to support for a long time. Second is that build for builders, because those builders are actually your future uh, creativity. Third is design your algorithms and remember the Conway's law. Yeah, um, yeah, this is the end of the presentation. I think we're right about time and uh, I'm happy to you know, answer any questions afterwards or if we have time here. Thank you so much, Brian. And it's amazing what you are doing at Stripe with respect to the also building the culture right from the uh, right up to the top down, which is really amazing. Which uh, because I've seen this also happening at many organizations, and you're focusing majorly on building that culture, which is also blameless, which I think is really essential, and also brings in a lot of new initiatives as part of it. Yeah. So really thoroughly enjoyed your session i'm just looking at the chat uh, we do not have any questions but if in case anyone drops in any questions later on so you can drop your contact details at the stage yes. chat channel and they will okay. be able to reach out to you later as well yeah thank you thank you and uh, as i as i talked about a little bit earlier stripe is building the uh engineering and product organization for APAC and then centering in Singapore, but we actually have multiple offices in Bangalore, Tokyo, and Melbourne. So happy to chat more about this. Amazing. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank Brad. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.